<clears throat> gonna be replacing this nut that's leaking. Um, the Army Technical Manual, TM 9-6115-6 four one dash two four p page 63 uh is the start for the fuel system with the exploded views and everything uh here's the new nut right here i don't know why that other one's yellow uh actually looking at the exploded view i mean you could see this is all loose and it's spilled fuel out um it's missing it's missing a washer I think somebody was in here and tried to fix this and, and found something, whatever. Uh, the part number, it's called the well nut, A-3816. It has two NSN numbers, 5310-01-197-14. Uh, and also, five three one zero dash zero one dash five niner five dash three five three six uh it's nitrile rubber nitrile rubber is the type of rubber you want to use with diesel fuel otherwise it'll corrode it first step will be to remove these five sixteenth screws the ones that I'm pointing to. And then along the bottom, you have a half inch bolt and on the underside there's a half inch nut. Um, you can see there's a bunch missing because I already have had this off to do some work. Um, the entire filler neck, cap, auxiliary fuel line and stuff stays in place. All right, I got all the hardware removed. And if you look at it, it's sort of slipped up underneath this bigger panel along the top. And then also at the bottom here, this one was a little damaged at the bottom already, but if you just kind of yank down, then it just pops out. Set it off to the side. These little screws right here that we're holding on the panel, and there's a whole bunch of them all over this generator. They're size 1032 by half inch long. If you were missing some or wanted to replace them, um, I got stainless ones, that's what was on there. I bought a whole bunch of these just to replace because a lot of them rattled out over the years. And whoever had worked on it in the past, as you can see up here, they actually used like some self tapper screws that aren't quite the right thing, but uh, that was just an FYI. All right, so to replace this nut, what I'm gonna start with is, I've already loosened, is take this fuel off, fuel line. This comes from your auxiliary pump. Uh, pretty much any work in here, it's great to take this off to get it out of the way. Um, I haven't loosened this yet, but the next thing to loosen is, I'm just probably gonna take this, this is the line that returns from your high pressure injection pump. So when you have the switch up front and you're going to start and it says prime and run and you hear it going tick, 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 tick. You can let that go forever and that pump's just gonna draw fuel out of your inlet or from your auxiliary pump, depending on how you're running. Then once it's filled in there, it's gonna spit back in here. A uh, great way to purge any air as well but I'm not gonna be able to hold the camera and remove all this, so I'm gonna do it, or at least get it all loose and then take it apart. All right, I got it out. Um, this thing was so jacked up, I think it's the wrong type of rubber that they, they tried to use to fix this. It didn't even get tight enough. You can see where the little like threaded part in the nut is pulled through, or it was over tightened, but I just yanked it out. Um, like I said, the washer is missing up here. Uh, make sure you get a couple rags and things around because these lines might leak. Clean that up. Make sure it's clean for then. Help oh, if I showed you what I'm doing. Clean it up. Uh, I'm gonna use some other tools and get this all apart, and then show you the proper way for it to assemble. Okay, here's the 
old way it was assembled, which was not improper, but the washer was missing, and I do not believe that this is the correct rubber. So it started to break down, and you could see the brass nut in there sort of like pulled up. It didn't stay tight. Um, so in my hardware, I had this washer. Goes on there. You want to make sure that the washer is not any bigger than the diameter of the top part of the rubber nut. And it gives you just enough to snug it up by hand. I probably wouldn't even have that on the camera, but you get the point, you can see it. Then, okay again, this is not gonna be an easy thing to do, but with it hand tight, it should go in there snugly. And then once it's in there, you'll probably need to hold with one hand on here and turn with the wrench. You're not gonna make it super snug. Um, over tighten it will make it leak but the idea is is as you tighten up that brass nut is going to come closer to the top and make the rubber swell so it seals in this hole so I can't do that again holding the camera but I'm going to do it now and I'll show you how I got it as far as how much wobble and stuff because if you remember before it was about this loose I don't even have this thing tight at all I ended up taking the other fitting off just to make it easier, but I used channel locks around the flange up top, and then it's a three quarter inch wrench up here, and just tightened it. I don't know about torque, but I mean, it's on there snug. It, it wasn't very tight with a wrench, but it's on there pretty snug now, because all the point is, is for that to squeeze enough to make a, a, a pretty good seal. If it ends up leaking on you you might need to tighten a little bit more so i'm just going to reassemble everything now all right it's all snug back up and the reason why they probably use this solid line between the aux auxiliary pump down here is once all this is hooked up it's very sturdy even though this in itself was kind of flimsy but again, it's going to give you a good seal down there. Um, but that's it as far as the that repair goes. Um, reverse the process, putting the panel and whatnot back on. Um, yeah. Um, you might want to go prime it. Let it run on prime for a little bit. So it brings fuel back over there and you could see if it leaks. Put that on when I'm working. So I'll leave it on prime and run. But do that and just check it. I'm not gonna make you sit here and watch. 